everyone and welcome to Museums Under the Spotlight. I am Alina Dima, your host, and today I would really love to invite you to a world of art, masterpieces, vivid colors and creativity raised to the highest level. You will be amazed by paintings representing breathtaking landscapes, beautiful shapes, portraits capturing feminine beauty and the symbols of a whole nation. I invite you to discover the world presented by the National Museum of Art of Romania right here in the very heart of Bucharest. So follow me in the sea of color in the Art Museum in Bucharest. The National Museum of Art of Romania is the most important art museum in the country. This museum, located in the former Royal Palace in Bucharest, has in its patrimony one of the largest art collections in Romania. The museum was founded in 1948 with an impressive collection of paintings belonging to King Carol I, collection that was first kept in the Pelesh Castle in Sinaia and also some other royal residences in Romania. Today the museum has in the permanent exhibition over 70,000 works of art separated in two main collections, the National Gallery composed by the works of the most important Romanian painters and the European Art Gallery. But our journey today will have as a destination the Romanian Art Gallery. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the National Museum of Art of Romania and together with our host, we will discover some very interesting stories about the painters and artists in Romanian art history. Uh, tell us some, uh, some details uh, and some interesting stories about the painters starting with the 19th uh, century during the modern art of Romania when it started to develop. We are in the gallery of uh, modern Romanian art and this floor presents uh, painters of the beginning of the 19th century when there was the passage from religious art to secular art. We have in this room painters uh, coming from abroad, some of them Italian, some others uh, German, and Romanian uh, painters uh, painting during this period when they started by painting portraits and later on they started also to paint uh, still life uh, uh, works or uh, landscapes. Uh, there was this passage from, religi from religious art to secular art and um, in sev several of their paintings you can see that the perspective is still at the, its beginning and they do not master the, the proportions but they tried to capture uh, the human face in a very realistic way. Uh, they do not resort to accents of light for the time being, but they focus upon aesthetic and rather rigid representation of the human body. I was wondering, since we are talking about the painters uh, starting with the 19th century and there has been this um, time leap, let's say, from the religious art to the secular art, uh, what is a representative name uh, for that time? Who was the most uh, prized painter during the 19th century here in Romania? A representative painter was Constantin Daniel Rosenthal who was of Hungarian origin, but he settled down in Bucharest, uh, especially in the 40s. He came to, uh, to Bucharest and he settled down here. He participated in the revolution, in the uh, 1848 revolution. And this uh, scene, the, the revolutionary Romania indicates, uh, the, the back, back background in, indicates a battle scene related to this uh, revolution. He started to paint uh, portraits for which he received commissions, but also genre scenes or an allegorical uh, painting like this one. And uh, let's talk more about this uh, representative portrait, which is actually a symbol of revolutionary Romania. What was uh, exactly the historical context that made him create such a painting? 
We have the background indicating this uh, revolution, but the main character is uh, Maria Rossetti, the wife of one of his good friends, uh, Gia Rossetti, uh, a woman who inspired uh, several works by Rosenthal during this period. The woman, so Maria Rossetti, wears in, the, in this painting uh, the Romanian blouse, the traditional Romanian blouse called the uh, Ie. Later on, this particular blouse will become the reference uh, blouse uh, um, worn by um, uh, Queen Maria because it was considered a, a kind of epitome for uh, Rom the Romanian costume. At the same time, we have the flag, uh, the Romanian flag uh, used by uh, revolutionary men during this revolution and uh, other elements of the Romanian costume, for example, the headgear or uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the coins uh, she is wearing around her neck. We make a small time leap. Uh, we are still in the late 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century and we are going to talk about another representative painter for Romanian modern art, and that is Teodor Aman. What are the main characteristics of his artwork? We are in front of the paintings by uh, Teodor Aman. Teodor Aman who studied in Paris, where he also came into contact with the Impressionist atmosphere. He came back to Romania and he became professor at the Academy of Arts, and he uh, trained a whole generation of artists who were influenced by his technique. But, but he can be considered a, pre a precursor of uh, this uh, modern period in Romanian uh, art, also indicated by the variety of uh, the styles he tackled, uh, still life, uh, genre scene, landscape and portrait. Uh, at the same time, he was involved in the life of life uh, of uh, high society in Bucharest during that period, and he was able to capture the atmosphere of this uh, um, part of the society in a series of work, which you, you can also see in this room. Uh, he was one of the artists who uh, became aware of the importance of history as a source of inspiration and on the same floor you can also admire a few works inspired by legends or by uh, historical uh, um, events. Maybe the characteristics or the preferred colors that he used, did he have a preference regarding colors and textures? He was trained in an academic uh, atmosphere in Paris, so his palette was rather uh, somber at the beginning. Later on, uh, this palette became luminous, especially after his contact with uh, uh, the Impressionists. I wouldn't say that he had uh, some favorite colors, but we can notice that uh, he was also interested in capturing textures and in um, uh, the way in which light could uh, build the form. Probably one of the most famous Romanian painters, known not only in Romania but also abroad, is Nicolae Grigorescu. And he is known for his incredibly beautiful portraits and uh, for being inspired by the true Romanian authenticity. Let's learn some more about his life and his art. We are in a room focusing upon the creation of Nicolae Grigorescu, a painter who has uh, begun to be discovered also by, uh, foreign, uh, by foreigners. There were several exhibitions organized uh, lately abroad. We have here uh, works um, by Grigorescu from his uh, first period, the period where, uh, during which he passed from icon painting to uh, sec secular painting by focusing upon uh, uh, portraits, his first commissions. Later on he went to Paris and then to uh, Barbizon where he came into contact with the creation of the, Bar the painters of the Bar Barbizon school. And when he came back he started to express this Romanian specificity in his works. When he was in France, he started to paint peasants and he discovered the, um, the huge potential of, uh, of this motive, which he exploited and he expressed when he came back uh, to the country in a series of landscapes and genre, scene, uh, genre scenes inspired by uh, rural life. 
which you, you can also see in the, the works around us. Nicolae Grigorescu was one of the founders of modern Romanian painting. Born in a small village in Romania, he moved to Bucharest with his family in 1843. He started painting at a young age, focusing at first on creating icons for churches. His technique started to improve as he received a scholarship to study in France, and he attended École de Beaux-Arts, where he met Piero Auguste Renoir. In 18 in 1990, he settled in Campina, Romania, and started depicting pastoral themes, especially portraits of peasant girls, pictures of ox carts on dusty country roads and other landscapes. He was named honorary member of the Romanian Academy in 1899. Another very well-known Romanian painter is Ioan Andreescu known especially for his landscapes and for the beautiful nature uh, that he uh, created uh, thanks to his beautiful colors and also for the nudes. So um, let's, let's see what is the story behind Ioan Andreescu. Andrescu was not Grigorescu's disciple, but he was uh, his, one of his contemporaries, and he was encouraged by Nicolae Grigorescu to go to France and to improve his technique. That's how uh, he went to Paris and then to Barbizon, where, like Grigorescu, he came into contact with the atmosphere of the Barbizon school. But unlike Grigorescu, who uh, presents the rural life in Romania in a rather idealistic way, Andreescu focuses upon the melancholic uh, dimension of nature and of um, um, everyday life, especially um, painting, especially uh, peasant. We can notice in the, uh, his works the fact that um, a kind of melancholy uh, is expressed not only in his landscapes but also in the still life scenes which he painted. Uh, also because he, um, he became ill, so he suffered from tuberculosis. He died very young when he was 32. And this um, overwhelming uh, sadness can, can also be noticed in the self-portrait in which we are. So in front of which we are now. Uh, what about the wonderful women that he, he portrayed, especially nude scenes? What was his source of inspiration for this kind of paintings? Uh, when he was in France, he had uh, a kind of academic approach of uh, the, this kind of painting. And when he came back, the models were uh, peasants, peasants or uh, poor women. Uh, but in his news, we could say that he did not focus upon the representation of a sensuous dimension of the human body, but on the, the relationship between the, the, the naked body and nature, or, or on, um, on the beauty of the human body. Flowers, portraits, landscapes, still nature. These are the main sources of inspiration of the famous painters that we have here in the gallery. And one of them is Stefan Lukian, one of the most familiar and praised names in uh, Romanian modern art. What is the, the story behind the creation and the inspiration of Lukian? This room presents uh, several, um, um, let's say, periods in uh, Lukian's creation from his youth when he discovered the atmosphere in uh, Munich and then in Paris and you know, when he admired a lot uh, artists influenced by Art Nouveau and this Art Nouveau influence can be noticed in a decorative panel, the spring, uh, spring um, exhibited here. Um, after this um, uh, Parisian experience, uh, he came back to Romania and he focused upon uh, a series of uh, portraits for which he received commissions, but uh, he also liked to go outside and to paint landscapes. When he uh, fell ill, he was no longer able to go outside and to 
paint in the middle of nature, so he had to stay inside and the motives which he treated especially were um, a series of flowers or uh, members of, the, of his family whom he uh, represented in a series of portraits. At the same time, we have in this room his self-portrait. One of the self-portrait, uh, his self-portraits, uh, indicating his sadness towards the uh, end of his life. And near the self-portrait, we have um, 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 an impressive um, painting with the, one of his favorite flowers, the anemones. Uh, flowers which were brought here from Italy so that uh, the artist could paint them in a very uh, optimistic way, I would say. We have crossed now into the 20th century and we will talk about one of the most representative painters of the avant-garde and Dada movement and that is Marcel Iancu. Um, Tell us about Janku's work and also about the avant-garde movement here in Romania. We are in a room presenting the works of uh, several uh, artists belonging to this Romanian avant-garde. Some of them were not only painters but also uh, sculptors and at the same time theoreticians of uh, art. Uh, such a theoretician and uh, uh, an artist involved in the theoretical part of the um, of the avant-garde movement was Marcel Iancu, who is represented in the, in the gallery by a, a few works indicating the, the revolutionary way in which he treated form, color, and at the same time composition. During this avant-garde period, artists started to, uh, focus in, to focus upon the geometric aspect of their compositions in a way to deconstruct form and color and um, to um, challenge the traditional way of representing nature. So basically the Dada movement and the avant-garde movement in Romania and not only here was a sort of shout uh, in order to break the boundaries and set the spirit free. Uh, this is why the geometrical forms and all the colors that they used, right? Uh, this comparison with a uh, shout or with uh, um, a cry is very appropriate because in many of their works they focus upon this expressive function of the color or um, upon um, a series of postures which suggest uh, this uh, uh, expressionism, not necessarily an expressionism, a type of expressionism related to their compositions but a kind of uh, ontological expressionism. a true Romanian symbol, a genius when it comes to sculpture and to bringing to life the true human nature is Constantin Brâncuș, or Brâncuzi, as he is known worldwide. He is the, fam the most famous Romanian sculpture and he is famous all around the world. And here in the exhibition there are a few of his works. So. What is the story of Brâncuș's life and source of inspiration and sculpture genius? In this small room of the Gallery of uh, Modern Romanian Art, we have several uh, sculptures by Brâncuș indicating his evolution from the sculptures made uh, during his youth before going to Paris and uh, the, the, the figurative characters, uh, character of these sculptures is indicated by uh, two portraits in, the, in this room uh, to the period where he, uh, in Paris, to the beginning of the period in Paris where he studied during a short period with uh, um, Auguste Rodin uh, and after this short uh, period, he decided to detach himself from the, the influence of this French sculptor who influenced many uh, artists during that period and to make the passage from the figurative uh, representation of reality to uh, an, a kind of non-figurative representation of reality. At the same time in this room, we have the sources of inspiration of his uh, uh, sleeping muses in the uh, portraits of children which he uh, made during the, this first period of his creation. Um, I would say that this uh, room presents a kind of sy synthesis of his works. What about uh, the sculpture that uh, we are facing now? 
the prayer, what is the symbol behind the sculpture? The sculptures, uh, this sculpture has a story because uh, it was um, um, designed to function uh, together with a portrait of a, of a lawyer, Petre Stănescu. The wife of this lawyer uh, ordered uh, the, a kind of memorial for the, the cemetery where her husband uh, was uh, uh, buried and uh, Brâncuș decided to uh, make a kind of allegory of grief and at the same time of the, the, the act of praying in general by uh, representing these uh, naked women. But during that, uh, during that period the sculpture was not understood as it should have been. However, Auguste Rodin, the French sculptor, appreciated this sculpture uh, in the same way uh, in which he appreciated uh, an, another metaphorical work which is also in this room, uh, Sleep. Considered a pioneer of modernism, one of the most influential sculptors of the 20th century, Brâncuș is called the patriarch of modern sculpture. His art emphasizes clean geometrical lines that balance forms inherent in his materials with the symbolic allusions of representational art. Coming from a humble Romanian family and growing up in a picturesque village close to the Carpathian Mountains, the young Brâncuș has big dreams. In 1903, Brâncuș traveled to Munich and from there to Paris to study. In Paris, he was welcomed by the community of artists and intellectuals brimming with new ideas. At his death, Brâncuș left 1,200 photographs and 215 sculptures. Brâncuș was elected posthumously to the Romanian Academy in 1990. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed swimming with me in the sea of color here at the National Museum of Art. And it can be reason enough for you to visit this spectacular museum and maybe even develop a hobby as painters. Why not? Until next time, remember to make your life a beautiful story.